a in a middle school y'all a middle school so you know you have high schools middle school students you know we just live in uh you know crazy times right now so we're gonna really we're gonna get really in and talk about these issues today and um uh, and we're looking forward to this a great discussion So guys, the first thing we want to kind of talk about is the the, the deep issue here. Um, you know, one of the things that our society and the media today uh, portrays on, you know, we are good to report, you know, news, a lot of times negative news or anything like that. Right. And not saying that, you know, the shootings, I mean, these are, those are important things to report. And so before we get even into discussion, we want to make sure that, you know, our thoughts and prayers with are the with the families that are yes. going through these tough times right now, that's going through a time of bereavement, those that are affected by the, um, the shootings, those that are affected by all the different things surrounding that. And so uh, we just want to do, we're just going to do a prayer at this moment just to uh, pray for the kids, pray, the, pray for the families, because prayer is very important and prayer can move mountains. So let's just pray for a minute before we get started. Lord, we come before you today. We just want to thank you for being a great God. You do so much for us, and we just can't thank you enough. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our many sins, to give us a chance at the tree of life. We come before you today, Lord, asking that you be with those families who have lost loved ones, those that have been affected by the shooting. Give them strength, watch over them, protect them, and guide them. Uh, we know that they're going through a trying time right now in their families, in their communities. And Lord, we know that you'll be there to strengthen and be with them. They just have to lean and depend on you. Uh, Lord, be with this, this nation, be with everybody in their community, that we may strive to seek you and put you first, Lord, and continue to just show the importance of having that relationship with you, Lord. Uh, we just want to thank you for all that you do. Continue to watch over us. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> And so I had this conversation with Frank and also my father-in-law, Brian. I was like, what is the real deep issue here? You know, um, we're not going to talk today about the race, the black, the white, all that type of stuff. Because a lot of times the media tries to portray like that's really the deep issue. And the, the big issue that we really face every day, the constant battle, is really good versus bad exactly god versus satan and we have a perfect scripture that we're going to read today and we're not coming to try to be oh spiritual scripture scripture here but the scripture is important because it applies to how we live daily and it can address all the issues that we're facing on a day-to-day -day basis right and so Frank, you feel, man? All right. So we're coming from Ephesians 6. I'm going to go from uh, verses 10 to 12. And it reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his, of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of Satan. For we do not, we, we do not wrestle with uh, against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against the powers against the rulers of darkness of his age against mm -hmm. spiritual hosts and weaknesses weaknesses basically what we're saying is well what this is saying is it's not against each other it's not against black and white it's not against all these races we're really fighting with with satan mm -hmm. satan is is the culprit mm -hmm. and we really have to come back with a spiritual mindset about mm -hmm. it. I mean, it's it's not it's not this. It's deeper than what society and what the whole, you know, the whole world portrays of this issue. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. and that's what we we've been uh, been talking about that. Yeah, and, and that was a great point. He said, "Well, you know, where you know the evil." Cause you gotta think, you know, I have a son, um, and if you're watching this, you're mm -hmm. you're part of the right mind of sound judgment to even to be watching this video, but to to process that where I'm going to get a gun or whatever it may be and to walk into school and shoot 
mm-hmm. some kids, innocent kids. And and I know in school there's bullying, there's issues back and forth. So I'm not saying innocent as like, you know, they might not have talked about somebody or anything like that. But to go in and to take somebody's life, right. that's, that's really, really, you got to think about that. And so you got to think, we're all born precious babies, innocent babies. I look at my son all the time. I'm like, man, imagine that all the people that have maybe committed murder or whatever it may be started as just a little, a little innocent child. child. Yeah. And so something along the way infiltrated, and that's something is that, that Satan, you know, and he really can play on the mind and, and creep in with those evil ways, evil thoughts. And when you really think about that, what can we do as a church, as a community, and as individuals in our day-to-day to try to impact those people that are going through those things? Because I'm pretty sure at one point in all our lives, we all had a glimpse or a second of where we may have thought evil or wanted to act on something evil and do something evil. But it's really important where it goes back when that first part of that scripture, it said in verse 10, be strong in the Lord and and the power of his might. That relationship that you have with God, your faith, that really can help you. And so the bigger picture is a lot of these people are, you know, are broken. They don't have that relationship with God. And it's not just going to church because some people are like, well, that person, he went to church or he did this and he still committed. It's not just about going. It's about really having that relationship where the scripture talks about where does your hope lie? A lot of those people are hopeless. And, you know, our true hope comes from God and also the promise that he's coming back for those that, you know, that obeys him and does his will. And so, you know, we were just talking about this. It could one person could have impacted no, any yeah. of those exactly. those people that have done those acts. Right. Not saying that there wasn't anyone spiritual or anything like that in their life that impacted them. But what we can learn and what we can gain from all these different things, and not making an excuse for anything or any conduct Man. that was that happened. Yep. But as a as an individual, I always start with the individual because it, it builds. If you individually strive to do what God says and be a light and to and and to pour into people spiritually, it has a ripple effect. Where it's from you individually to your family, to your church, right. your it's community, to contagious. your nation, is larger scale. And so, with that, we want to really, really, you want to really focus on that. And so. Every day, try to be positive and try to be a light to those people, uh, to not those people, but everybody in general. You never know what your kind words or you pour into one spiritually can impact and help them to to kind of sh- to overcome some of that evil. You know, that darkness, what drives our darkness? Light. And if you can be that light of that world and the light to that person, that is the, one of the biggest things that can help what we're going on, especially in this generation today where we have social media leaders and all that that are just shining and just darkness and evilness every day and trying to be defi- and decisive. Yeah. That's really what it's all about, man. Yep. And so at this time, we're going to feel it to see if anyone has any questions or comments. Okay. I don't know if Yeah, that's what I was, I was um trying to go to. I'm trying to see where it is. Okay. There it is. Top chat. There it is. Yeah, I, I see yeah, we it. Yeah, I see it. Okay, y'all live now, so I'm not gonna talk. Turn it down. We're live. Just tell me, excuse me. Yeah, we're live. And so, one of the things, you know, a lot of these kids, you know, I worked in a community center for three to four years when I was in high school and up to college. And my mom actually worked in the community center in the inner city. And a lot of these kids come from 
broken, you know, backgrounds, broken homes. And that's why you, when you read scripture, I know a lot of times we emphasize on the importance of family. Family is so vital to God's um, mission that he wants us to do in this world. And it's so vital to really every aspect of society today. You know, having that mother, that father that gives you that, nur that nurturing, that correction, uh, that teaching really helps those individuals on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot, of the, a lot of people and students, they have a rough home life yeah. um, or a single parent home life. Yeah. Um, I mean, I came from a single parent background um, and not making excuses, but I had that relationship. My mom important to me the importance of God and that spiritual aspect where times when I wanted to go to the left, I would remember what God was telling me from my studies and scripture that would pull me back because these teenagers, they have a lot they're facing every day. And it's not, it's not easy. It's not yeah, it's hard to a lot of times to do what God wants you to do, but that's where the importance of that family um, supervising your kids, putting them on restrictions, you know, doing those different things really help them. And and don't think about it as a, if you're if you're a child out there and you're looking at this. A lot of times, don't think about. It, but there's that level of protection. Exactly. Uh, this this brother here um, in our live chat room, he actually hit on what Lamar is saying. He said, I think it's too I think it's how parents are raising their kids. They go unsupervised for long periods of time. We're not teaching them anymore. We're letting the T V teach them and social media teach them. So he uh, basically I mean we really have to really be mindful of what our, our kids are doing. I mean, I don't have a kid yet, but I have one on the way. So <laughs> Yeah. I, I can relate. I'm, I'm sure Lamar can, yeah. can tell me you really have to be involved mm -hmm. with these kids. And as he as he mentioned, the whole TV and social media, a lot of that stuff is very important. Yeah, uh, to our, you know, even this right here is social media, about what content are you allowing your kids exactly. to look. A lot of this stuff is stemmed from people seeing content of where, okay, it's okay to go get a gun, to walk into school, and mm -hmm. to do whatever this may be and not only school shootings we're, we're having like i'm from nashville we just had a a guy that went into a waffle house uh yeah. over a month ago yeah. and killed a few people at waffle house for you know for no reason at all you know that that stems from satan you know we are all naturally born uh and to not have that that type of monster we're just gonna go and just commit some capital murder and just murder people. Yeah. And I know we're talking about the deaths and murders and stuff today, and I understand that, you know, sin is sin and, you know, people lie, people, you know, steal and do all those different things. But we're trying to address what is really going on in the climate of our um, society today. And this is really evident because people are scared to send their kids to school. Right. I have friends at church that are thinking about, well, should I homeschool my kids moving mm -hmm. forward? And so, you know, and they're looking for answers. And the biggest answers, and not being cliches, but starting off with that relationship with God, the importance of family, and pouring into your child to make sure your child understands and that they're been a light to have that light on other people who may be the ones that are struggling with these demons and these different things. And you just never know the impact that they can have um, on the kid. Yeah, on the child. So let's see what we got going on. And, and, and I like uh, this brother on the chat said, don't forget where good is, evil is always present. Right. Um, that's good. That, that's a good comment because, you know, whenever you're trying to do good or even when you're trying to strive to do, you know. Satan finds you. Say Satan finds you. <laughs> going back to that, you know, about the scripture about, you know, evil communication corrupts good morals. Yep. And so, so about who you're hanging around. Uh, so if you're a student today or a young adult, that's very important, you know, to the, your circle that you're hanging around. You know, of course, you got to go, you gotta, you know, be in the world, but not of the world to be that light. Yeah. But, you know, who are you hanging around? You know, um, I know we have kind of went away because we told you from the beginning, we're not going to focus just on the shooting, the shooting but the yeah. root issue behind oh, what's going on. These children are broken. They come from broken families. Yeah. They're coming not having any hope. And the Bible talks about you know, where does your hope lie? You know, and if you don't have that relationship with God, and that's I, that's the church. That's 
Yeah, that's and so the church. This is our opportunity to not be on social media going back and forth for all the hoopla because you can get so drowned in comments and arguing back and forth. It's our job as a church to stand up and be the forefront and to be the light and say, we're going to talk about these these issues. We're going to talk about the root of these issues and not the 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 what the media and social media wants us to talk about and pin where this was a, 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 a white shooter or this was a black shooter or you want to have this issue here, 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 here and get distracted from what the real issue is. Exactly. We're a nation that has abandoned God. Exactly. You know, if you look at, if I encourage you to study 2 Corinthians chapter 15 when you got time, it's talking about the nation when they had abandoned God and all these issues continue to rise. Well, it said that it wasn't safe for them to walk the streets, that cities were fighting other cities, nation was fighting other nations. And that sounds a lot like us. Like us right yeah. now in America. It does. You can't go places down the street certain time anymore. You got you got all these security systems, you gotta lock the door, you gotta do all this stuff. Nations, cities, we're in war we're, with North Korea, all this stuff is going back and forth because that our nation, even though we say, you know, in God we trust, do we really? Hmm. You know, we're a nation that had has abandoned his morals, abandoned his teaching, abandoned what he stands for. And when you when that happens, the scripture kind of tells us some of the repercussions and things that occur. Um, but if you read the whole chapter, it gives you hope as well because it talks about when they turn back to God, you know, the the different the blessings and hope that they had. And not saying that you turn to God for those reasons. Yeah. You won't do that just because of the relationship exactly. that you have. It should already be there. Yeah, exactly. and, and what he's done for you um, in general. So we had a question. What do you guys think we can do really to make a difference as the church of Christ? Okay. And then we had one person say, one thing is that sc uh, schools took prayer out of it. The world is constantly separating from God. Yes. And I just alluded to that, talk about how we have kind of been away from God's morals. Yeah. And prayer is very important, you know. Um, we talk, we pray in the beginning. Prayer, you know, the Bible talks about praying without ceasing, but that prayer is our direct communication with God. And the, the fervent prayer of the righteous avail much. So, prayer, there is power in prayer. And not only prayer, but as one of the questions of what can we do, you know, prayer is one of the first steps, but then the action. That follows it. Exactly. That follows it. Exactly. You know, lot, you know, a lot of times we pray, pray, pray for, I want this job, I want this job, I want this job, but you don't go fill out no applications. You, you got to actively do something, and, <laughs> and that goes back to this. So, you know, pray for those that are going through this. It, I mean, it's a tough time. You know, I've lost a mother, and that's a tough time, but to lose your child, if something yeah. happened to my, that is tough. Yeah. Pray, these, these families need prayer. Could, continuously constantly pray for them pray for our community pray for our children pray for our society as a whole yeah. but what can we actively do you know i would say as we alluded to to actively start with yourself on you being a light to those daily exactly. you know if it's do kind acts do kind words kind deeds do those things uh, starting off as an individual and that will ripple effect up to the church when the church can get together and not just hold conferences and talk about this stuff, but go out into the communities, go out to the schools and show, look, this is what God, the purpose of the church is to impact everybody and talk about what we're there for and, and give these uh, people, individuals, communities hope. You know, everybody long for hope. Exactly. Um, but when your hope ain't in God, you're hopeless. Ooh. I think that was something right there. I think that was something right there. That was good. I mean, that's the thing. You just have to really be be the church. And when you be in the church, being Christ, it's it's going to show mm -hmm. in your actions. It's going to show with the people you hang around. It's going to show, you know, it's just in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. So that's just really yeah. how, what can we do to make a difference? Just be the church. Everything else will follow. Have their relationship with with the Father, and everything else will follow. Will follow truly. And as and as he just alluded to, I think one thing too, that it's not easy. You know, no, it's easy for us to say this here, but this is the one thing that we all have to realize. God wants us to just actively do it. We got God on our side. 
And so it's our job is just to get up, set the things in place. God is going to be the one that drives this thing home. And so he just wants us to do our part. That's the purpose of the church, to fulfill his promise and his mission. And so it's tough. You know, You know, we're up here talking about it. And people, well, it's easy for you just to talk about it, which is true. But what are we going to do as a church? We just have to get up. We talk about pray, but be active. And remember, we have God. We have the Father on, on our side that can help us when we put our plan. We have so many smart, educated, hardworking, dedicated people in the church that if we just come together and work together, sky's the limit. Especially when we got the big man above on our side. Exactly. It's fixed. But we have to get out there and like just what we're doing today, starting with dialogue. And starting, what can we do? Put the stuff in action and actually go about trying to carry it out on a day-to-day basis. Safe cuts. <clears throat> Let me look, liking these comments. Yeah. Well, guys. Oh, hold on, I got one more. Okay. But what about the home and the family issues that we have? Yeah. So it goes back to that, you know, their relationship. Let's see. Yeah. And so, and so what about the, you said the home and family issues we have? Um, one thing as a society, and this is more as a society and also as a church, where we, we a lot of times let the past impact or it, it impact, but determine our future. All right. So if you have past home issues, past family issues, we'll allow that to determine our future. Now, it's important, you know, we talked about the importance of family. You know, God talks about that family from the beginning of the institution of family, the husband and the wife. And, you know, a lot of people don't like to talk about this stuff, but our society today, it might be two Adams, two E's. All right. But what does God, we, as we talked about since the beginning, we have a nation that has abandoned God's morals, yeah. God's teaching. And, you know, this is not my, what I think or what he think. We're just talking about what God has said. You know, that's where it all stands. We have to stand on his word and teach the importance of family, the importance of having that, that role model, that leader, somebody to pour into you, where it talks about training up your children the way they should go. We should rear them in a direction you know, for when they get of age, they're able to stand and do what they need to do according yeah. to his will. And teach their families and yeah. be a generational thing. Also, we have another comment. First, first, some of us really need to be converted and convicted and realize what he did for us and that they may change the outlook on things. Right, definitely. Hmm. You definitely have to be converted in Jesus Christ. Yeah. So. And, 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 that, and that's a big thing because I love the word conviction. Yeah, you know, yeah. conviction is a strong word. You know, are you really convicted? We have a lot of, you know, when I say we, I'm saying just in general society, a lot of people, you know, they know God, but do you really know God enough to be truly convicted that no matter what, <laughs> I'm going to stand where he stands? Stay grounded, yeah. You know, whatever, when issues arise in the political world, that goes here, but God's here, where will you stand? You know, um, when issues around the, the school shootings and people want to, well, we need to go do this. We need to retaliate or we need to do this or whatever it may be. What does God say about that? What does God say about that? That conviction is, you know, very important because it saddens me, you know, and it's crazy what we have got to the point I mean, it's true in our society where today when I heard about a school shooting, I was running on the treadmill and they said another school shooting. I was like, oh, it's kind of where it's come. It's it's easy, almost easy to say where it's like it's like numb, it's being, numb. being numb to the fact of it, numb to the fact where the, uh, these were some that's... some some children that had their whole life ahead of them. Um, yeah. Now, when last time I confirmed on those two, I don't think anyone had passed at that at that point, and so we really want to pray for them and their recovery. But just to think about that, where we have, you know, where we're the state of um, America, yeah. 
is uh just really uh mind mind blocking. <clears throat> I think we kind of already addressed it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We we'll appreciate you all, you guys, in the live chat. It's yes. been really great dialogue going back and forth. Yes. Thanks for all the comments and the thoughts. Yeah, we really enjoyed this, and we we plan on doing a few more um, discussions because we need to have discussions like this. Yeah. If nobody else is going to have it, the church, church needs to be on the forefront to. Yes. to address these issues. And so, with that being said, we'll have Brother Frank uh, close us in a prayer. Once again, our condolences out to everyone out there that's affected by all these different shootings uh, in school, wherever it may be. And just to pray for this, this America and the nation in general. All right. All right, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for just opening our eyes this morning to see another day. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending him down to the sin, sin sick world. We pray, Father, right now for the for those who are affected by all the shootings in America, not just the, the two we heard about this past week. Father, everybody who's been affected, we pray right now that you... Be with those families. Give them the comfort that they need, Father. And for the for the vic for the not even the victims, Father. For the ones who committed who committed the uh, the crime, Father. Be with them right now. Amen. Let let them and just really give give them your your uh, your presence, Father. And just and just help them to 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 just really grow right now. And uh, know that what what they've done is is it wasn't anything good. But Father, let them know that you still love them, God. Pray right now that you will just protect protect our nation as a whole. Pray right now you protect our our families. Pray that we continue to stay in your word. Pray you will pray that you will continue just to bless everything that uh, your church is doing to uh, to move forward with this with this ongoing issue. And uh, in your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>